Uh, we please welcome to the stage Billy Hunter. <laughs> Clap till he gets here. Sorry, it takes a long time to get from the north. Um, just to prove I'm, I'm an academic, I have a notebook. I'll set that there. And apparently you're supposed to do this as a... That's what comedians do, apparently. I even have a, I even have a citation for it. Uh, somewhere. Just to prove I'm not uh, plagiarizing anybody. It is Murray 2010, and the book is uh, how, basically how to be a comedian. <laughs> Teach yourself. So my name is Billy, I'm an ecologist, and I am a northerner. Yep, I come from the magical land in the north, uh, where we have many exotic species for ecologists to study. Species like wild things, white walkers, free Presbyterians. Um, and it does breed a certain uh, type of um, character living in the north. It makes people somewhat a little bit more morbid. Um, so the first thing I should actually say, just, just as a start, you know, it's really nice to be back in Europe. <laughs> um, I didn't really expect that. I mean, I returned to Northern Ireland having lived in Central Europe for several years. Um, and I guess that makes me an immigrant. Um, so I've come to Northern Ireland to take people's jobs. <laughs> Not that anyone has a job in Northern Ireland. Um, so I'm guessing you probably, you, you, you form your opinions. My name is Billy, I'm from Belfast. Um, that suggests I'm of a particular persuasion. Um, you know, I'm actually not. Uh, so I'm, I was named Billy, uh, my parents my parents uh, decided to bring me up then Catholic. Um, and that's an interesting thing in Northern Ireland because uh, you, know, you have to slide chameleon-like through Belfast. Um, I, went, I went for years not quite sure what, what to say to people. Um, but it, it teaches adaptation, I guess. You know, my parents were proud Darwinians. They, they really believed in survival of the fittest. And I thought, right, you know, that's it. I need to get out of Belfast. So as a, as a young man going off to university, I thought, right, I'm going to Glasgow. Because that's where you go if you want to escape sectarianism. <laughs> the only city that has turned it into a professional sport. So I'll, I don't want to dwell too much on, on, on politics because it's never a good thing to to sort of think about. Um, what I really want to talk about are my real passions. So as in biology, there are two main uh, processes that are of interest to people, sex and death. Now, being from Northern Ireland, sex is out. I don't really <laughs> have a choice. I'm not allowed to talk about it. Death, however, I'm your man. So I'm interested in decay. What happens when things decay? What happens when they rot? Basically, I, me I, I now have a PhD in measuring how quickly things rot. Um, and decay is an important process. I mean, you don't think enough about it, do you? Like, when you think of decay, what do you think about? Like, uh, like, like mushrooms. Yeah, mus <laughs> well, mushrooms. I mean, that brings me back to... That brings me back to Catholicism, but we'll not dwell on that. Has anyone heard that? I mean, it's a typical Irish dad comment, really. You know, Catholicism's, Catholicism's a lot like growing mushrooms, because um, what you do is you keep people in the dark, and you fill them full of shit. There's a scientific term for that. Coprophagy. Look it up. It's, uh, it brings up some interesting things on the internet. So, yeah, um, so decay, you grow mushrooms. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty important part of decay. Cheese making as well. You know, without, without decay, you don't have cheese, you don't have wine, you don't have ripe, ripe fruit. Decay, it's a microbial process, um, but it's largely driven, whilst the microbes are the engine behind decay, it's largely driven by 
animal activity. So when you make cheese, someone has to pour the cheese into the mold and put it in a cellar for years. Animals help to break down, um, break down a rotting corpse. So when you bury granny in the back garden, all the insects and worms sneak in and they, they, they chew up granny. But it's the, it's the, it's the microbes that then get rid, of, get, rid of the, get rid of the organic matter. So they're the ones that break this stuff down and gra granny will float away into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide eventually. So, so decay, it's, a, it's an important process and it's driven, whilst it's driven by the microbes, it's the animals that are controlling the process. So I, do, I study this in the deep sea, and we spent our, I study it in streams as well, I study it in coastal areas, I study it in wet places, basically. Um, and when, I, when you think about decay, um, you have to think about the animals. And one of the big problems we have at the moment is um, we're going through a, a, another phase of extinction. So this is the next great extinction, and it's caused by us. Yay! Aren't we wonderful? Um, and the fact that we're going, ex we're we're overfishing the seas and killing off animals is a problem. One of the things I'm I'm interested in at the moment is what happens when when crabs and cr crustaceans go go extinct. Now, obviously, crabs. You think what, what happens when crabs go extinct? And I don't mean should I tell my uh, should you know when you get rid of crabs? Should I tell should I tell my partner that I've finally got rid of them. Um, and yes, I mean, there are those crabs, thyrus pubis, <laughs> the pubic lice. Anyone had one? <laughs> <laughs> or several? The interesting thing about, about thyrus pubis, I'll continue using the Latin name because it's a little bit more exotic sounding is it's actually an endangered species. Anyone know why? Any thoughts? Waxing. Yeah, exactly. Deforestation. <laughs> and, I can, and there's a paper out there that, pro, that demonstrates that 98% of the decline in pubic lice abundance, that's numbers for normal people, is driven by deforestation, habitat loss. So while you're all out there, Waxing away, getting rid of your, your body hair and, uh, you know, trimming yourselves down to, look, to do whatever it is that you do in the bedroom. I don't think about that. I'm from Northern Ireland. <laughs> These little guys are literally clinging on at the brink of extinction. And it's the same for many of the, many of the crabs and crustaceans that are, in, that are in coastal waters because those guys are getting knocked out. So the... the the problem there, the fundamental issue is that, well, no one cares about what's happening now. You know, you knock out the crabs, no one cares. It's a big problem later on because what that does is it, it changes the processes in the seabed and that actually increases the amount of carbon dioxide that's going to be released from the seabed under warming climates. So in terms of uh, understanding species loss, crabs, really important. Pubic lice, not so much. They're a, they're a bit of a they're a bit of a, a dodgy one, although maybe there are processes there. Maybe declining Western birth rates are linked to the fact that nobody needs to scratch down there anymore. Um, and I, I think, you know, just at this point, I'll leave you to dwell on that for a little while. I just want to sort of highlight something, you know, thinking in terms of physicists again. As a biologist, I have a solution for uh, Schrodinger's paradox. It's called a chainsaw. If you chop that box in half, experiment solved. <laughs> uh, thank you, Brightclub. Thank you, Dublin. Good night. <laughs>